Talk, YouTube, Super Misfit checking in. We are about to get into the 67 through 69 Camaro Big Brake Upgrade using 2018 SS Camaro Brembo Brakes. Stay tuned. We about to get into it. Let's go. Now, um, if you guys need any information about the parts, I will have the parts listed in the description below. If you want a complete overview of the parts, look in this corner right here. And uh, the picture of the video will pop up. I'll also have a link to that uh, video below. I need just like a complete overview of the parts. I was trying to keep this video short and not have it a 30 minute long video. So I didn't want to really walk through the parts on this video. Uh, again, if you want the uh, information about the parts and stuff like that, check out those videos. I'll have those in the description below with a whole lot of other information down below in the description. Be sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications, because after this video is done, we're going to pick up and do one about uh, the brake lines, the master cylinder, and stuff like that. This video is basically just installing the brakes. That's all this video is. So, uh, <clears throat> hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope this information helps a lot of people out there. And again, if you need the uh, exact, exact information about these parts, check out those other videos. They are down below in the description. So subscribe, turn on post notifications, just ride out. Okay, we're gonna start on the rear. In order to install the rear brakes, you will have to remove your uh, rear axle. So you're gonna wanna drain all of the fluid and remove the uh, differential cover. After you remove the differential cover, this is the part that we are after right here. You can see it got a little hole in the top. Basically, this sits in there exactly like this. It goes down this hole right here. and goes all the way through. This line, this hole right here is lined up with this hole here. It's a screw that goes in through there. It goes in, it threads in on the outside part. This goes all the way through and locks it in. So basically that's what it's doing inside of your rear differential. When you're removing this bolt, remove it real slow. These are known to break sometime. So be real careful when you're removing these. Take your time and remove it real slow so you don't have no problems with it. Once that's removed, you can lift that all the way out. Now we have to get the C-clips. Now the C-clip sits on the axle right here. You can see we got the axle right here. What you have to do is you have to push your axle inward. And as you can see, once I push it in, the C-clip is right there. You can use a pick you have one or a little small, super small flathead, rotate it around, basically just pull it off of your axle. If we trying to do this with one hand and hold this phone, ain't gonna quite cut it, but uh, basically you just remove this from the axle. Once you remove this from the axle, you can uh, pull the axle all the way out. So let me remove that and get this axle out and we're gonna pick up from now. C-clip, you remove the C-clip, now we can pull the axle straight on up. It's time to put the actual bracket onto the rear end. It's a spacer that comes with the kit. The spacer only fits one way, and that would be this way right here. If you try it this way, you'll see it don't fit. Try it that way, you'll see it don't fit. So there's no wrong way to put this on. It only goes on one way. You want to slap the space on there like that. And it's going to be the same thing with this bracket. The bracket only goes on one way. So we get the bracket on. We make sure we got the holes lined up. Make sure you're on the right way. It's time to put the hardware on that they give you. You have eight of these total in the kit. These are nine sixteenths. Let's start with this one here. Once you push it through, you set the bolt on the rear side. Always hand tighten all of these. That way, once I get all of them in place, I could just come around with the impact and 
tighten everything down. Now we'll take the impact. This is a 916. We'll take the 916 impact. Set it in place. Make sure you're in the right direction to tighten it. Take our wrench, 916 wrench, set it on the rear so the bolts don't go anywhere. Tighten it down. Now we have the axle back reinstalled. We still have to go put the C-clip back on the inside of the rear differential. And uh, as you can see, I don't have my axle studs on this axle. These axles are gonna be getting replaced. These are the original stock axles uh, <clears throat> that were in the car. I actually had to get these machined down. That's why you see that smooth finish right here. I had to get those machined down. And I also had to get the center of the rotor machine down as well. The stock rotor would not feature a stock Camaro axle at all. <clears throat> so you're gonna have to find somebody that can bore it out for you. Find your machine shop or something that don't mind doing it for you. But uh, like I say, these axles are gonna get replaced. I'll have brand new axles uh, once the rear end gets back from uh, being narrowed. Now, let me go set these C-clips back in there so we can have the axle sitting exactly where it's gonna be sitting in your car. Let's do that. I'm gonna push the axle all the way in. Set the C-clip on top, pull it out. Now that's locked in place. Now that we have the rotor installed, it's time to install the actual caliper. The caliper has two bolt holes, one here and one there. Two matching ones on the rear, on the brackets that I showed you guys earlier. A picture of that should pop up in the video in the corner right now. So now that you guys have seen that, we're gonna line the holes up. Line those holes up. Two bolts go into the kit. I'm gonna tighten those by hand. Real important that you get these to go in straight. So tighten as much as you can by hand first. Now that we have that in by hand, tight. Take our three-fourth socket, set it on the impact. Now we're about to tap of the front. I already removed the stock stuff. 
Um, it take a little while to do it. If you guys are interested in it, I'll do a separate video on them. If I get a few comments down below, I will go ahead and do it. So now we're just going to take a real good look at the actual bracket. This bracket is going to sit right here in this location right here. This lower bolt goes in and goes through here. But the catch about this bracket is this lower bolt right here being that I have the rack and pinion steering, I can't get this bolt in while this is already in. So in return, what I had to do was, I had to go ahead and push the bolt through there from the start. I'm gonna set that in place. This upper bolt that goes up high right here, as you can see, it's a gap between these two. So what I did was I shimmed the bolt. You shim it too much, the top part will stick out further than the bottom part. If you don't shim it enough, it'll sit further in. So uh, so what you want to do is use the right amount of shims. Now, I already spec this out. I've put these brakes on three or four times. I know for sure I need six shims, but I'm about to show you guys how I came up with that number. Tighten these up. I'm about to show you guys exactly how you find out you have the right amount of shims or not. Tighten it down. The lower one is going to have a washer and a bolt that goes behind this one here. Slide that on the back. Tighten it up. Press in the front. Three, four branch of the rear. Tighten this all the way down. What you want to do is get an angle finder, set the angle finder directly right here, going straight up and down, and the angle finder should read 90 degrees now. So now I got everything bolted down super, super tight. I set my angle finder flat on the part that I need to be at 90 degrees, and we are reading 90 degrees. So that means this is straight up and down. In theory, we should be good. Um, the next step is to put the hub on. Now, when you order these hubs <clears throat> from flying by, they're gonna come with the bearings. You have to set the bearings in yourself. Uh, I greased these bearings. I didn't use nothing but a uh, regular high temp disc brake wheel bearing grease. You wanna grease those real good, set them in place. On um, the rear comes with a gasket that you just set in place. You can see I got grease running all out the back of it. I'll clean it up after a while, but you want to grease everything up. Set the little ring in the back to seal it. In the front of it, this is the, I'm still getting my hand greased. This is the original washer that came with the uh, right stuff brake kit. And it has a little key right here in the center that slides on there. So this is going to go on after you set your hub on. Now that you got the bearing in place, <clears throat> set the washer with the key in place. That you had a hub and your washer in place, you're gonna put this nut right here on there. Always tighten it by hand as far as you can before you put any kind of tool on it. Now
tankies. I'm going to keep out. Trying to make sure the water is pretty much in place. Now, while you're turning, there's going to be a little hole that sits in the side. Through that hole, you have to drop this pin through. See, the pin goes all the way through. You peel this side back. You just need a nose pliers or something and peel it back or peel it forward to lock it in place. Mine is not getting locked in place because these have to come off. I have to undercoat the inside of my wheel wheel, so I'm not going to be putting this on there. And there's also <clears throat> a silver cap that goes over the front of this that comes in the kit as well. That also goes on once you set everything on permanent. Now I got the rotor sitting in place. But the kitsch is due to the fact that we barely got room for this to go all the way back. The brake caliper has to go on with my little rotor. So there's no way possible for me to do this while I'm on the phone with you guys. But I'm just going to show you real quick how this will go. Basically, I'm going to have to pull this out and everything will go on just about like this. I'm going to line that boat up back here to that rear hole right there. Once I line those two up, I can start turning it and it'll line up and get in place. The upper bolt won't be a struggle at all. So let me get all of this together. And as soon as I get it together, we're gonna pick up from now. I know it looked like a lot went on, but you guys did not miss much, I promise. I took the rotor and the caliper, just like I said I would. I set the caliper on top of the rotor and pulled it in to where I could bolt up and put my hands on the back here. This lower bolt, right here to where I could get that in place. And I started threading that one in. Once I threaded that one in, I came up to the top and got the upper bolt also bolted in. Once that was bolted up, I just set the brake pads in here so I can mock everything up to make sure that everything fit.